Okay, everybody, how are you? What's going on? It's 1488 here, and uh, we welcome you to the short show, episode 5, part 3, and it's the, I've been trying a long time to just to do the fir- third and final installment of episode 5, and the reason is, well, I've been going through a lot lately, and what I thought, you know, thought, okay, this is the right time to do this video, and it seems like, you know, it's not taking place, and it's not doing, it's not the right time, not the right place. Well, right now, I'm going to try to do it right now, and I have a microphone now, so I'm going to try to enhance a little bit, but just let's talk about what is going on since episode 5, part 2, which was uh, back in May or June. Uh, but my last video was just about a few weeks, was a couple of weeks ago, maybe about a month ago, um, when I talked about the new Kiss album, Monster. But let's talk about what has happened. I had a second relationship, and uh, to be honest with you, it did not turn out the way I wanted to. And here's the truth, and the whole truth. It was about late July. I was invited to my friend's son's birthday party. He was turned three years old. It was on a Saturday, a day off, a day I wanted to have off from work, uh, from my old job. So I did, and uh, went, and I saw, and you know. One, her, she introduced me to one of her friends, uh, Sophia. By the way, Sophia, uh, she introduced me to one of her friends, and uh, actually, she's kind of related, by the way, um, to her. And she had three kids, and the middle one, a three-year-old, came by, wanted to play ball with me. I'm, I'm sitting there, quiet, being. You know, behaving like a good, like a good friend. You know, because back then, truth be told, I had a crush on Sophia, and for six years. And by the time she was out of high school, I stopped having a crush on her. Moved on with my life, and uh, you know, when I saw her again about a couple of years ago, I think it was about two. No, last year, last year. Um, she probably still thinks I'm a perv. Truth be told, and I think that is the way it's. You know, she still thinks of me, but um, so I was gonna say, well, what was I gonna do? Say no, you know, leave leave the little kid alone, leave the little girl alone. Okay, so played ball with her, made funny noise, you know, made some weird faces. She liked it, and she go. Uh, her mom goes to me. You're so good with kids, you know, she never, she never gets attached to someone like that before, and you must be really good with kids. Have you had any kids? I said, no. Well, I said, um, I'm a single man. I'm t- uh, she, she, she talked to Sophia right after I left the party, and uh, Sophia asked me, do you want to go out with this woman? I said, do you, you want a girlfriend, right? Like I ain't gonna have a chance to go out with Sophia. Truth be told, and that's the truth. I said, uh, I don't know. I said, she kind of seems old. I said, why don't you try to ask her out, ask her questions, and please, for for my sake and yours, go out with this girl. Okay. We asked questions. About a month, week or two later, we started going out. And, um... The kids meant everything to me. I mean, um, but afterwards I got a new job, and I don't want to tell too much detail on that because the company finds out some. If I talk about their company, I might get fired, and uh, I don't want to happen. Don't want to happen. Don't want this to happen to me. And um, basically, I just said. And, and this was a thing. Here's the you know here's the details on this job. I'm driving a bus with people like myself. 
mentally challenged, physically challenged, um, people who need to go to that to dialysis, who need to go to a doctor for surgery, uh, who need to go to a store, who can't find a ride, and they have to be qualified for that for the kind of services that I take them to. And some of these people that I've known, I've known, and the, the run I do, some of these people I know by you know through high school, you know through through our day, through my days at Lime Mountain uh, School District, or who have known in the past, or who've known me from somewhere. This was the kind of job I wanted, and uh, five days a week, optional six, but. It was the pay was more than I expect. The pay was more than I was working at the eggplant in Michael Foods, so that's why I decided to leave Michael Foods and work a day shift job, a job that I'm a, a time shift that I'm usually familiar with. But here was the thing: first week training, not bad. At the same time, I was going through my last few weeks at Michael Foods, and it was it doing two shifts. It was oof, horrible. But then, when we started to do our runs, it I get up at four o'clock in the morning every morning. In the morning, it, it oh, I mean weekdays, I get up at four o'clock. I gotta be there at the office by five thirty. So get up, shower. Or get a cup of coffee, get some breakfast, and get ready for your run. And um, I wish I leave the office by six o'clock. I finish between five and six. Sometimes a little earlier, but let's say about four forty-five. So it's usually a twelve-hour gig that I'm doing, but it's a split shift. On top of that, I gotta go home, prepare for the next day, and that's gonna take an hour or two. Just you know, with the time going back to home, you know, eat dinner, get ready for the next day, and then get some sleep. Well, I started to forget about texting. I started to forget about calling, and I started to forget about seeing her, and I forgot about coming to her place for dinner. And she got a little upset with me, and earlier this past, and one week ago, uh, she posted up on her Facebook that she wanted to split. So we chat online, I said, what's the matter? I said, you're not calling me, you're not texting me, you are not doing your responsibilities that you are, that we agreed upon. And I'm sorry, I'm like, I'm sorry. But here's the thing, I have a new job and I don't want to waste my time losing this job. This job means the world to me right now. And if you don't like that, I, I said, if my job's getting in the way of our relationship, I, you know, I think we better not see each other anymore. And I, you know, I said, don't get me wrong, but the kids are amazing. Uh, the kids look at me as a, as a stepfather, uh, and, um. Because I don't want to go too much detail on the on on their on their father, but um, here's the thing: I'm 23 years old. I'm autistic, and I'm still young, and I'm still have to you know I'm still a long ways to go in my life, and I got a long ways to go and a lot to learn yet of being a father and being a boyfriend. Don't get me wrong. This has been my second relationship in a in a year. So I told her I blew it. It is not. It is nobody's fault but mine. I take full responsibility for the demise of my relationship with my girlfriend. And I don't know if Sophia will ever trust me again. I'll tell you. It was. I don't want to put this in the. I don't want to say any, you know something in the wrong way, but it was worth a shot going out with this woman. 
and I don't know if there's any other woman out there that wants to go out with me and I that's that's the thing I'm tired I'm sick and tired of being that single guy but somebody's got to learn and somebody's got to respect my decisions my my decision of leaving Michael Foods to drive tr bus for almost you know for eight between eight and twelve hours a day is my job and it's my responsibility my responsibility is to pay bills and focus on my life I've got a long ways to go I'm 23 I don't smoke I don't drink and I don't do drugs there's a lot and this woman expects me to take care of her three kids that you know to be the next to be the next father of their ne of the three kids I'm sorry I can't do it it's it's my fault and it's right now this job is too much it's too much when you have a job and a girlfriend and kids which is more responsive which is more priority your job number one it's the number one priority is your job and uh, hey that's the way it is and I blew it so that's the end of it that's the end of that discussion um, about my girlfriend and my job and I don't blame my job for the demise of my girlfriend. It's my fault. It was. It's everything that's. Every, you know, the demise of my relationship with this woman was my fault. I don't care what women say about me. If I'm a nice guy or I'm a pig. I am a nice guy. I am not a pig. And if people want to think I'm a pig, because I am unfaithful in relation in two relationships then that's the way it's gonna be women will respect me women will go out with me no matter what happens and I will find someone who can respect me for who I am what I do for a living and that's the way it goes if people don't want that way screw them now Second subject on the Schroeder Show, episode 5, part 3, is some good news. Yesterday, I went to a um, little get-together with a small arena, well, almost arena. It's an outdoor football league team called the Lycans Thunder. And uh, the reason I decided to go to do this uh, get-together thing was because... Like I, like I said earlier in this year, I wanted to play football again, and I had a real itch to do so again. If I wasn't, you know, if I was was not going to finish college right away, that I wanted to play football once again, and my 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 dream of doing that again is becoming a reality. And if that ever happens, it, then I don't think there's no need. To keep my uh, Facebook page being the first semi-pro or professional autistic athlete in history to be open, but um, of course I will show you a link. Uh, of course, if you want to ever see that website and be a part of it, I'll show you a link to it and I'll put it on uh, either that corner. Or that corner of the screen. So, <clears throat> and I had a great time, even though it was rainy, it was cold, raw, muddy out. Um, we play out in Halifax. It's not in Lycans. It's in Halifax, uh, where the old Engel Racinger Auto Place is. There's a field just just a few feet down the road, and uh, at it snakes around, but it's a, it's right by a cornfield, so, 
And the reason I wanted to be a part of this football team was of two guys that I worked with at Michael Foods in the past. Um, and they are brothers, Tom and Marvin Booth. And their father is the owner and the coach of the Lycans Thunder, Coach Tom Booth. And uh, so I guess it's Tom, Tom Sr. I met him. We talked. I've met some of the players. Um, and they're a great bunch of guys. Um, and they said, you know, what position do you play, Michael? And I said, I am a kicker. And he said, cool. We, we, we can definitely use a guy like you on our football team. And the coach goes to me, we want to see you kick. Next week, our next get-together is next weekend. We want you to be here, and we want you to kick for us. And if you can do that, we can put you on the football team. No, no strings attached. I'm like, well, let's just find out right. And I told Marvin right away. I said, I don't know what's going to happen. I said, my job is first, my first priority, but if there ever is a chance that you guys can get me, you know, work things out and uh, allow me to play football, um, whenever you guys play start start and play football again, start camp, I said I'll be right there and I'll be. I said I'm willing to be with this football team. I'm willing to play football again. I don't care what it takes. I want to play kicker. I don't want to play football again. It is my life. Football is my life. It's my passion. And I really would like to play football once again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, anyway. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a great job. I mean, it's a, it's a great. I mean, my reality is be, this. My dream is about to become a reality once again, and uh, I hope at the next get together. I hope it's going to be dry enough, and uh, the the field that will. I mean, the field was saturated and muddy. I hope it's. I hope it'll be dry enough that we can play football again. And I definitely need new cleats. <laughs> Uh, believe me, I need new cleats uh, and um, new some some new stuff. I need a new helmet. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to get a new helmet, new football pads, and stuff like that. I mean, I haven't played the game in six years. I tell you what, when I played with those guys, stretched out with them, ran across the field, did a lap around the field, I was and I you know I haven't played football in six years. Real contact football, and have that practice, the kind of practice like that, and the play out there with these bunch of guys. It was an experience I could never ever forget. And and uh, I'll tell you what, my legs were stiff. My leg, my my calves, my thighs. We're feeling it. My lungs were screaming uncle by the time I completed a lap. I'm like, <gasps> oh my god, I'm like, oh my god, it's been forever. I'm like, oh god. I said, I hope I don't get cut. <laughs> well, here's the details about this football team. and the, uh, Well, the football, the association is an outdoor version of the Arena Football League. There are no goalposts. It is a 50-yard field with 8-yard end zones, just like the Arena game. The dimensions are just like the Arena Football game, but there is no wall. There is no field goalpost, but there are kickoffs in this league. And when they asked about me at first. I uh, said, "What's the league all about?" And uh, I haven't seen, I haven't heard about the league. I said, "Look it up." And I know there's a team in Sunbury, close to where I live, and I wanted to figure out what to do in terms of, okay, which team do I go to? Do I go to Sunbury's team or do I go to Lycan's team? But I think, in, in my, in the best way, uh, I've known Marvin and Tom and Tommy for the last. Six, 
you know, for the last year, and I think I'm going to be more familiar with the football team than the Sunbury team, and I think I can fit in just fine. And that's just the way it is. And I hope I really get to do this. And, uh, you know, it's a long, it's been six years in the making. I've tried to, I tried going into the college system, didn't work out the way I wanted to. With my grades, of course, that was the big problem. Getting into University Park was my grades. And um, I tried some other way to think about <laughs> that I wanted to play again. But it just didn't feel right, you know, working full-time you know, for the last year and a half. I might go foods. I thought it would never happen. And uh, I guess now that depends on what happens with my new job. I guess it will it will become a reality. Uh, but we'll just have to figure it out for myself and for my for the team. They need someone. They need a kicker, and I'm the right man. I'm the right guy for the job. So I'm hopefully when I get a chance. Uh, hopefully someone will do some videos and we'll put that on my YouTube channel. And I hope that will happen. I really do. Now another thing is, and finally third, I you know. I've already finished the um, the Lime Mountain 2005 season review. Uh, I had a CD that was scratched, and now I have contacted. I've seen a friend last night in my football or uh, alma mater's homecoming game. Um, he still has the CDs. I said, Michael, get a chance when you have a chance, bring those bring those burnable CDs over to my place. I still live in Trevorton. I said, you, I still live in my dad's place. You can. Drop them off, and uh, I I have the I have the copies, including the games, all the games. That's gonna be great because I want to share that with everybody of my success, uh, especially our senior season. Um, that you know, it wasn't that much of a success in terms of playoffs or Twin Valley Conference Championship, but it was successful because I. My my senior season was better than my junior season. I don't think we have any tape of my junior season, so um, so that's about pretty much it here. And of course, Lime Mountain um, is back to the way it is at the halfway point. And it's at the halfway point, they're four and one. But once again, I gotta talk about Southern Columbia, and Southern Columbia is still p being a pain in my ass. They almost lost. If the Lewisburg kicker would have made a field goal in the last second, and this was at Lewisburg, uh, at Bucknell Stadium, where the, the goal post is a little narrower than a high school game, uh, than the high school's post. Uh, Lewisburg don't have a field of their own. They go to, they play at Bucknell's Christian Mathesy Stadium, and, um, and there, I remembered I played there once for my senior season, and we'll have those highlights of that 2005 game with Lewisburg uh, whenever I get the chance. But they were leading for most of the game, the Lewisburg Green Dragons, and they were a team that went to the state play, almost went to the state finals last year uh, in Double A, and they almost beat a good Southern team. But this is not. This was a a warning to Southern Columbia that they they might lose maybe one or two games down the road, and they have a few good opponents left over in this second half of the season, like Bloomsburg next week. Uh, Danville, if they have you know if they have a good team, Danville could give them a test. And Montcalm area, which is a really good team this year, and under the second year under Carmen Den uh, Carmen Dan Francesco. I'm hopefully thinking that, and I think it's going to be at the Silver Bowl this year, uh, or it's going to be at Tiger Stadium. I don't know where it's going to be at, but either in Mount Carmel or at uh, Ta in Catawissa, I hopefully think Southern Columbia will lose those two games. Uh, will lose, I think, to Bloomsburg, and I think they'll, you know, if Bloomsburg gives them a good run, I think they'll lose. If Mark Carmel is the, the team that they think they are, they will beat them. 
And I hopefully that will be the case because Lime Mountain. And I will show you the point system then. I will do another video about the point system. Uh, I didn't I know I did one a year ago, just about a year ago, and I will do that again uh, to to show you guys what it's like in the PIAA, especially in the in the point system in Class A, and uh, of course the standings with the Twin Valley in the in the District Four standings. The Twin Valley there ain't no point system. It's based on record and uh, based on conference playing and uh, overall record and. Right now we're undefeated in in conference play at uh, three and zero, but you know we still got a long ways to go, and there's only there's only five weeks left in the season, and we only have four conference games left, and that's Tri Valley. We're at Tri Valley next week, then we then we're back at home in uh, less than two weeks to play um, in to play Upper Dolphin, and. Uh, and then we go, yeah. And then we have a string of home game. We have a string of home games uh, to finish off the year. We have only one more away game, and that's at Tri Valley, and it's next week. Then we have Upper, and then the final few games are at home at Upper Dolphin, uh, East Juniata. No, no, actually no. There's two, two away games. Tri Valley next uh, this coming week. Upper Dolphin is coming up, and then Halifax is on the road. That's our last away game for a while, and then we have East Juniata, a Triple A opponent, and uh, Pine Grove, a Double A opponent, and those are the only two higher class teams left over on the schedule is those final two games that uh, play at home East Juniata and our senior night at against Pine Grove but right now the way that that Southern Columbia we need to catch up to Southern Columbia by winning winning out but also we need them to lose to big games like Bloomsburg and Montcalm area and because if that happens I'm hopefully thinking we'll be close enough to get back. It just depends on how good. Well, Tri Valley's not that good. Upper Dolphin's not that good, and I don't know about Halifax yet. And maybe I don't know if Eastern has any good. And that's the problem because in terms of wins uh, throughout the season, it's going to be a problem. And I'll show you more about that in the boat when I talk about the key parts of the playoff scenarios and the points. So, that's a wrap-up for the Shorter Show, Episode 5. Episode 6, I'll think about something for Episode 6. I will try... Now, here's the thing, now. I don't want to do parts anymore. Now that YouTube has allowed me to do more than 15 minute videos over 15 minutes now, I can probably do just one video... And call it a whole episode. I don't need to be calling it parts anymore. So. And by the way folks. <laughs> a little Halloween preview. Makeup. And you know what that means. Me being a. Me being a KISS fan. Oh yeah, here's a shirt. This is a shirt from last year. From last year's tour. Pretty cool, huh? Hardest show on Earth tour. Um, it's my first KISS shirt. And I, I love that shirt. I... I want to keep this. This is a real good shirt. So, maybe I'll do a demonstration on how to uh, do the Gene Simmons makeup thing. Because I've done this, I've done it three, four, or five times. And uh, most of the times, you know, right now I've been doing it with a cream. Instead of that greasy stuff you buy at the, at the grocery store. I'm like, 
What's with that? So, <laughs> well, anyway, half hour already, so, uh, wow, this is great. So, this is Michael Schroeder, also known as 1488. Of course, you can always comment, like, and subscribe at youtube.com uh, slash XIV88. So, once again, I'm Michael Schroeder, also known as 1488, or... XIV88. We'll see you next time for another video. Catch you later. Peace.